Hi Grace Hill family and friends and welcome to our daily devotional. Today I'd like to cover Luke 14. Luke 14 opens with Jesus challenging the Pharisees, first by healing a man with swollen arms and legs on the Sabbath. And then while having dinner in one of the homes of the Pharisees, he reminds those gathered to live humble lives and not to expect to be revered when they are in positions of authority, where he says in verse 11, For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. From verse 15, Jesus shares the parable of the great feast. And then verse 25, Jesus shares about the cost of being a disciple. It's about here where one or two of you might be thinking, Hey Dave, what's this about cost? The gospel of Jesus Christ is free, isn't it? And you'd be absolutely correct. But like all things in life that are worth having, it does come with a cost. Here Jesus is reminding us that following him, that loving him, comes with a cost. And that cost is laying down our lives and surrendering to the will and ways of God. But when we lay down our lives and allow God to lead us through the power of the Holy Spirit, the joy that we will experience from that far outweighs any fear. I'd like to return to the parable of the great feast for a moment. Let me read from um, verse 12. Verse 12, this is Jesus speaking. When you put on a luncheon or a banquet, he said, don't invite your friends, brothers, relatives and rich neighbours, for they will invite you back. And then that will be your only reward. Instead, invite the crippled, the lame and the blind. Then at the resurrection of the righteous, God will reward you for inviting those who could not repay you. Hearing this, a man at the table with Jesus exclaimed, What a blessing it would be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Verse 16, Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent out his servant to tell the guests, Come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. Sorry, One said, I have just bought a field and might and must inspect it, please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five pairs of oxen and want to try them out, please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those are first invited will get even the smallest taste of my banquet. In this parable, Jesus is referring to three separate groups of people. The first, the invitation was sent to the man's friends and family. That's his nearest and dearest. And that represents the nation of Israel. The second group is the poor, the destitute, the lost, those who have no more hope. The third is you and I, the Gentiles. Let me remind you from uh, verse 23 where it says, Go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that my house will be full. That's the great commission in action right there. But in particular, where Jesus commands his disciples in um, Acts 1 verse 8 where it says, You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And that's where we are. We are from the country lanes, from behind the hedges, and from the ends of the earth. Today I'd like to ask you a question. What have you done with your invitation to the banquet? Have you come up with all the excuses you can not to attend? Have you perhaps fallen on hard times and believe the invitation you received is not valid anymore? Or are you someone who has never thought about accepting the invitation? Someone who hasn't contemplated salvation or where you plan to spend eternity? This parable, the parable of the great feast, tells us that we are all invited to the banquet. The our invitation to the banquet will never expire. We all have a place setting at the table with our name displayed, our name tag displayed for all to see. 
Today, will you put aside all those silly excuses and accept the invitation? Will you lay down your life and declare Jesus is Lord? If that is you, please go along to our website. That's www.gracehill.co.za where you'll find our contact details. Please get hold of someone uh, through the email or through the phone. Someone would like to contact you, explain what salvation means, and most importantly, to pray with you. Amen.